Judy Stiles, thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. Well, as we saw earlier this month, there are a lot of opportunities for arts and culture in Joplin, and today we're taking a focus on a new activity coming up to our region tied into the Joplin Regional Arts Coalition. And joining me, we have Jane Ballard. Thank you for being here today. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, I, this, I'm excited to talk about talk this. About something new for the community, and you know, a lot of people <laughs> hear about Joplin Regional Artists Coalition might say, mm -hmm. well, what is this organization? So let's just start at square one, explaining somebody walks Absolutely. up to you and say, well, who are you? you know? <laughs> well, it's actually a fairly new organization in the in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. um, JRAC was organized in 2010, and that's about the time that uh, the arts were just coming to the forefront in Joplin. Mm -hmm. um, so that they started with the Cultural Affairs Committee. Uh, art walks right. began then, and then we had a, our first public art, a mural, that was commissioned for 15th and Main. Right. And then local artists saw it as an opportunity to show their strength by organizing and getting directly involved with the organization. And they formed a nonprofit that would be JRAC, Joplin mm -hmm. Regional Artists, Artists Coalition. And uh, there's today 115 members, and the four state area is represented. It's not just Joplin, it's the area. It's the Joplin region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, we have members participating in all mediums of art, uh, painting and, and ceramics and pottery, and um, I'm a photographer. Right. And <laughs> so, yeah, they have uh, three to four exhibits every year, including at Spiva mm -hmm. and things like that, uh, um, over at Carthage at Art Central. Right. Uh, we also have monthly coffee talks where we can get together and just kind of visit with each other and find out what everybody's doing. And uh, we have workshops. I actually hosted one on uh, photographing your art for your websites or mm -hmm. uh, uh, for um, you post them for uh, yeah. sales, uh -huh. right? Yeah, <laughs> for, yeah, for uh, art galleries and things. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. So it really is a chance for artists to join together. They have a common love of art, maybe different mm -hmm. types of mediums, as you say, but it's just kind of sharing and getting to know each right. other. Right. We're, we're kind of all in the same boat. <laughs> we, we love to create, right. and we need to find an outlet for that creativity. and. Maybe even find somebody who likes our art and, mm -hmm. and likes to uh, supply their homes with it. <laughs> right, so, so, so that's sharing and tying it mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So as a member, there's a lot of benefits then for the members? That they yes. Can, you know, yes. Or they're just getting to meet others. Right. Like, well, the workshops and the galleries are mm -hmm. two of the big uh, benefits. Okay. And then, of course, our inaugural studio tour. Uh, that's going to be a big right. thing here to, to really kind of push us out into the forefront. Now, someone who's watching is interested mm -hmm. and say, well, how do we become a member? Do you have regular meetings? they can come to or how do they find out you know how can I join this organization well we can find us on the website mm -hmm. or there's also a uh, Facebook page okay. for the group and that will uh, give us give them all the information that they need to join I believe it's $35 a year mm -hmm. for an artist so it's not very, very expensive right? <laughs> uh, exactly and I think the benefits will far outweigh the the cost of joining so yeah. when we think about things like the first Thursday art walk and mm -hmm. those types of things your organization has been involved in a lot of those all absolutely along. Yes, mm -hmm. and I'm still fairly new to the organization. I mm -hmm. think I've only been a member a little over a year. Mm. So yeah, I'm so still learning, people, right? <laughs> learning all the ropes. And yes, yes, mm -hmm. please come join us. So, <laughs> well, do you find that some people might be surprised to realize that there are so many artists in the region? That you know, you talked about the numbers. That seemed pretty impressive. I, I think they would be. I, I really think they would be because mm -hmm. th there there is so much that. Maybe we just don't notice every day, mm -hmm. but uh, thanks to this group and Connect to Culture and all these other things that are uh, coming around to, to start putting art into the the, the faces for, for, right. mm -hmm. of everybody now, uh, I think I think it's really going to make a difference here. And you mentioned your interest in photography, so mm -hmm. briefly mention that. Some people say, well, how do, you know, tell me about the art involved in photography. Right. Um, I picked up a camera when I was a kid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here's your camera, go have fun. Right? Exactly. Uh -huh. the, the Kodak Brownie, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I started with. And back in the 70s, I think I graduated up to a Canon AE-1. Everybody mm -hmm. had one, right. you know. And you took I kind of pictures with that. You <laughs> took real pictures. Uh, these were film pictures, mm -hmm. so you you actually thought about what you were doing. So uh, you had shutter speed and aperture. Uh -huh. and you that. composed your picture. You you thought about it before you took it. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the digital age. 
um, they kind of get a little crazy. And they just kind of take a lot more yeah, than you used to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, being a film background, mm -hmm. I think a little more about my uh, shutter before I mm -hmm. before I snap it. I, right. I plan the picture. So, so yeah. So being able to see something and say I can frame that shot. There's a way to capture that moment. Right. Right. That. Right. right. Mm -hmm. so. A whole lot more than just pushing a button. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and of course, nowadays with digital, you can instantly see what you have versus I that is the film so and have it processed. Nice. <laughs> I actually have film in my in my uh, Canon, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I haven't shot the whole roll yet. Okay. I'm hoping I get something out of it. Uh, last time I used it, it had a light leak. Mm -hmm. So, well, we don't know, but... <laughs> yeah, it was always the surprise on a film always camera. A What's surprise. on that film when it comes mm -hmm. out? Right. <laughs> so that's one example of an art uh, technique that people can see and right. be involved with. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, with digital photography, mm -hmm. you've got things like Photoshop, right. where you can manipulate pictures into something that you didn't even know you couldn't recognize the original to what they've created. Mm -hmm. um, I have friends who are painters oh. in uh, Photoshop. So they use the Photoshop technique to they really use, They things. start with a digital photograph mm -hmm. and by the end of it you can't tell that it is not a painting. Mm -hmm. They have worked with it with the brush strokes and things and uh, it's amazing. Right. It really is. So, so mm -hmm. for a lot of people, you mentioned, you know, I started off with a brownie camera. Let me mm -hmm. say, I remember that too, you know, that love of photography yes. <laughs> carrying through. So you can take that next step to say, I'm going to do more than just take the family poses at Christmas and things like that. You Absolutely. Can, Pick up a camera. Everybody's got a cell phone. Mm -hmm. yeah, not because they've got a camera in their hand. <laughs> most of the time, those cell phones uh, have a pretty good camera. So mm -hmm. get it out and use it. Right. So encouraging Absolutely. others to get involved. Mm -hmm. right. Well, today, of course, we're talking about your studio tour, which you yes. mentioned. So this mm -hmm. is the first time you, your group is approaching this, having a it chance is. to go uh -huh. to the places where people are creating. Right, right. Uh, we had a small committee that uh, just formed mm -hmm. to work on this project, and uh, um, this will be in November, November 1st and 2nd, mm -hmm. and we have 13 locations with 26 artists. Mm -hmm. So, we, so we've got a, a large group large to group. start with, and what I say, we had 115 members, so yeah, Just that's almost 25% uh, <laughs> of our uh, membership going to participate in this. So. I know we yeah. have a map that the, may come up on the screen is showing mm -hmm. you saying it's a Joplin area that, you know, it's not all downtown right. Joplin. Where yeah, there's the map. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start out in the Stones Corner area, and we have uh, um, a shop out there. It's uh, Brent Skinner's um pottery house there mm -hmm. on the number 13, right. and that's out towards Diamond. So, okay. so um, we have a wide... Wide, wide range, but range the of travel there, focusing yes. on the regional mm -hmm. aspect. So, yeah. how did the idea come about to say instead of just having a display in a studio, let's have people come visit us? Well, several communities across the United States have studio tours, mm -hmm. and that's where the idea came about. Is some of our artists have participated in studio tours when they've lived in other locations, Location, right? and or visited, and and they have thought that was uh, something really cool to to bring to Joplin. And so mm -hmm. that, that way we can get the public to come visit us, see what we do, um, maybe learn a technique, um, visit with the artists, find out what their mediums are, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of things. See some of their finished products out on the shelves, uh, hanging on the walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So really building that appreciation for the process perhaps because right. you may go to a studio and say, well, there's that finished piece of work. Right. But to see how do they start off with that basic point. Exactly. Understanding mm -hmm. the, the creative process. How does it go from, you know, up, up here, here into a finished product? Mm -hmm. So, yes. So that's it's a chance for mm -hmm. people to learn, really. It's kind of an educational approach as yes. well. Yes, and learn. the artists will be at their uh, studios to mm -hmm. talk to you. So if you've got questions, ask. And chance for, mm -hmm. you say, interactive as well? If somebody wants to say, can I try that? And you let them do that? A couple of them have talked about having something that the public can participate in. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I haven't heard who and what, right. but uh, they have talked about it. So I, I imagine there will be something Some chance to set up somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. What really is involved with that? Get your hands dirty, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you have a lot of displays, and we have some pictures that can also go mm -hmm. along with that. So mm -hmm. we'll call up some of the photos and let you kind of describe what people okay. are seeing and you know what Absolutely. they can tie together. And mm -hmm. As we you know have a variety, as you can say, there's right. a lot of different things that people are seeing. Uh, that would be Kristen Gerard, and I'm trying to find her. Uh, uh, so this looks like jewelry art. The, yes. yes, and so she have, she has what she calls. Um, of course, it's not on my... Oh, there it is. Kristen's Laboratory. Mm. Yes, she combines science 
with art. It looks like a maple seed there. Yeah, it <laughs> is. Uh -huh. um, her bio, she has, uh, my jewelry combines the ordinary and unexpected to make unique pieces, an example of wh what heck can happen when art and science collide. And as you can see in that image, right. there's a little bit of both right there. Mm -hmm. So uh, she She's very creative, makes all kinds of Great. very beautiful. Very unique things. Very you unique, yeah. You're not going to go find those, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we have another one here. Looks like mm -hmm. a flower that someone has created. And that would be Cindy. Mm -hmm. Cindy Cogbill. Uh, she is an artist and naturalist. She uses a variety of media from polymer clay to acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the probably a combination. Point. I can't quite it's see if that. 3D there a little I, bit. I'm thinking there's some texture in that. So I'm right. thinking there's some clay and acrylic paint on this uh, image. So. so that's a chance to see how she creates that. Yes, uh -huh. that she'll, she's, she'll be one of them willing to talk to you about it. Now changing seasons. Uh, changing seasons. the to the winter. Absolutely. So. Uh, this is Tom Jones, mm -hmm. and I guess he's pretty well known for his snowman. And if I can find his bio, here we go. He's been creating art for more than 30 years. His work ranges in subject matter and often in medium as well. He enjoys working with images of animals, particularly oct octopus and bison. Hmm. He also enjoys incorporating whimsy in his series of snowman paintings. Yeah, you don't expect to see the owls perched on the snowman's arm. <laughs> no, no. <nope. laughs> so tying that together. Okay, that would be Mary. And there's her bio. Mary Datum paints in realistic, impressionistic style and prefers to work in oils. She loves the play of light and shadows as well as bright, clean colors. She especially loves painting animals and putting life into the eyes. Whenever possible, she paints from life. Hmm. So that's, uh, we we'll go to the garden and see those flowers as exactly. they're growing and paint them and mm -hmm. create them and so forth. Okay. Well, as we were putting together this show, we had everyone submit a bio Right, so this for is this. straight so from the artist. This is describing. straight from the artist, mm -hmm. and uh, we've also shared it on our website and Facebook page, oh, so okay. they'll be able to connect the the art and the medium with the artist by the time, time we get to the they'll studio They'll know what they're tour. going to be seeing, right. Mm -hmm. This piece is from Connie Miller. She's a modern expressionist painter. Uh, she paints people, animals, flowers in large flat areas of color that contrast and enhance her subject matter. Hmm. Her goal is to provide vivid color that draws you in, surprises your senses, and encourages you to feel emotion. Yeah, you can see that picture there of the person interacting with the dog. It yes. just kind of brings you right uh -huh. into that picture and uh -huh. tying them together. So. Oh, well, that's me. That's <laughs> Photography is really that, Yeah, that's, right. that's just my uh, profile pic. So, oh, let me see. I'm, I'm down in here somewhere. I don't even remember what I wrote about myself. How's that? And people yeah. think of photography, they don't realize the whole many different things you can do with photography. So Absolutely. I think it's just going to mm -hmm. be, let's take a picture of this building or this person or something. You're really right. showing some aspects here of photography. Yeah, I was playing around with a little different look on a, a profile pic. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, as a photographer who rarely travels far from home, I focus on the world around me. I try to capture the enchantment in the ordinary and the charm in the commonplace. My photographs capture a specific moment in time that only I have experienced. Her images are, well, my Here's images right. I'm reading, uh -huh, are from my, my perspective, and I enjoy sharing that experience with all who wish to see. Yeah. So really communicating through the art and the photography. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying mm -hmm. you'd like to share with others. Absolutely. So. Okay. We're changing a little bit of the format here. Oh. We're talking about different types of mediums. All different, different kinds. Types. Yes, and I'm looking for and her bio. And the artists contributed these photos and their bios for you. Like you right, said, they right. Were, you know, so these are the types of things people will see when they go to their studios. And mm -hmm. we have these examples as well. And there she is. All right. Diane Miller imagines the possibilities of transforming a flat piece of art glass into 3D shape using the heating process in a glass kiln. Mm. She enjoys bringing the personality of the glass out through the color of selection, designing, cutting, and firing processes. She loves creating dramatic fused glass vase that can serve as a focal point on any table. Oh, so mm -hmm. glass artwork is another aspect. Uh huh. Yeah, and that that, that, that is a peacock. Yeah. Peacock. Too. I see the Isn't that beautiful? beautiful? Yeah. Yeah. So we're tying that together. Let's look on the next one. Some more flowers. Okay. Flowers. That would be 
Dustin Miller. Dustin Miller believes he can use the uh, talent God gave him to create the beauty of nature, animals, objects, and people in different and unique ways using a variety of media that allows him to express his admiration for the world and everything in it. Miller hopes to be an inspiration to his students as well as inspiring others to become interested in art. Great. Now you mentioned students, so a lot of the work we're seeing are artists are teaching others. Yes, you mentioned he, you have workshops. He a is. lot of these will mm -hmm. have workshops and teach people what Absolutely. they're doing. Absolutely. And, and all the images here that you're seeing, like uh, Dustin's piece mm -hmm. here, uh, these are all part of the art raffle. Okay. So the public will have chance to win these pieces. So what they're of seeing, art. they're going to be available yes. that day. Yes, for with the exception of my um, biopic there, but uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I actually have a, a better piece for sale. Well, matter of fact, the, it's this piece, piece right here. Okay. So yeah, you won't get my mug. Uh, you'll you'll get, get an actual <laughs> photograph. <laughs> that, that, yeah, right. you'll get something you would like to hang in your house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's look at some more of the pictures then. We have sure. ours here. So. Okay. Well, that would be April Davis. Then I'll see if I can find her bio. I had everybody in order of our map. Right. So that's, numbers that's, the why, maps, yeah, right? that's so. why my papers are kind of in, in, in a different order here. But uh, April is an outstanding winning artist and is inspired by the world around her. Davis uses brushes and oil paints to bring to nature, bring nature to canvas. She captures the moment of a butterfly landing on a flower or a bird whistling on a branch with vibrant color and impeccable detail. You see a lot of detail in the horse. Yes. There. That's really neat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as people are, these bios, are they included in the information they'll have that day? Or that's on your website, they can take. It's on the website and the Facebook page, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't created a book. A booklet that they take. Yeah. But they can look at, the, obviously, that, then follow your hand on your phone. You can have that absolutely. page open and go with you. <laughs> and that might be a good thing to do maybe for next year's <laughs> studio tour. Yeah. So uh, we can have a little. Your digital directory on the booklet, phone. Booklet, yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. well, let's continue to look here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know how everything is just a learning process, you know, you start doing something and and you have to learn what works and what doesn't work this, so right. right oh this is a piece from Brent Skinner uh, he's been a constant in the clay community for decades he currently owns Skinner Skinner's Pottery mm. and takes great joy in teaching wheel thrown and hand built pottery to students his current body of work consists of functional pieces as well as large art pieces so a lot of time going into something like that in yes. <laughs> the creation process. So I mentioned all the artists have a lot of time I, I, invested in I tried places. pottery in, in school. I, I think it was, uh, um, might have been high school, could have been junior high. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Decided that wasn't uh, your path. That wasn't my thing. <laughs> I die, couldn't do it. <laughs> so, I have great appreciation for those who can, mm -hmm. but it's not me. <laughs> so everybody has their own niche, but they find that That's they really right. want to do. That's so, right. So let's all go right. back to our pictures and see what we have some all more. Right. Uh, Jewelry. That's a piece of uh, uh, jewelry from Valerie Dorr. Mm -hmm. She works in wood. Uh, it says, only recently discovering a love of wood turning, Valerie has developed her skills by learning the basics from her husband and taking classes from nationally recognized wood turners. Oh, okay. And that's yeah. something you don't hear a lot about with the wood. Creation. Wood, yes, yes. yes. She and her husband will mm -hmm. uh, be on the tour, okay. and he does a beautiful woodworking, too. So you have some mm -hmm. couples involved in the artwork. Yes, it we do. Great. There's at least two couples in this uh, mm -hmm. tour, okay. uh, both of them. So one studio, you get to see two artists in uh -huh. many cases. Mm -hmm. working together. So. And then we have, uh, I think, two studios that there are four artists sharing, sharing space, space in, in each studio. So yeah, you Get can stop one time and see, see four, four different people. Things. Mm -hmm. well, let's move on to the next one and okay. see what we have. All righty. Um, let's see if I can find that in my papers. You know how that is here. We have a lot of variety as we see, people are seeing. It. We do. Just, just and I can't seem to find hers right now. And, um, um, but that shows you just that you can, artists can yeah. create so many different variety of different scenes and things mm -hmm. tying them together. So, okay. okay. I think that's Helen's, but I can't remember. Well, let's move on to the next yeah. one and see what mm -hmm. we have in the next picture. Okay. We'll get that there. So we can, another picture to look at. They're maybe loading it in the back. There oh, we go. There we go. Bicycles. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. And I know I just saw hers right here. That would be Becky Golubsky. She works in pastels, oil, and acrylic paints. Her approach is working in layers from thick to thin, build up interest in texture by way of pushing, pulling, or dragging the medium with brushes, palette knives, and her fingers. Hmm. 
Golubsky is known for her pet portraits, but also inspired by her travels. Beach elements, vintage trucks, and female figures seem to find their way onto her canvas, described by lush, vibrant colors. See that picture just there? You feel That's, like you're right there looking at those bicycles in yes. the snow. <laughs> right, so. Let's take a look at another one and see what we have here. Okay. So. Okay, and that would be it? Daria Claiborne. Mm -hmm. She's an award-winning clay artist showing on local, national, and international levels, as well as teaching beginner workshops. Claiborne's favorite surface decoration method is Mishima, if I pronounce this correctly, and she loves to combine multiple glazes to finish her functional work. And so you have some samples? I have a piece of her right. work right here. Mm -hmm. uh, this piece in that front. has the lid on it, right? Uh -huh. Has the little scoop. Mm -hmm. That's one of the pieces that will be, be available in the uh, art drawing. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's look at a few more, and then okay. we'll talk a little bit more about well, how we're going to deal with that drawing, you know, how that Right, so, right. And here's another piece that looks like we have an example mm -hmm. with us here today. Yes, I do. Uh, that one is from Richard Reed. He's practiced dentistry for over 40 years and has recently turned to pottery as a creative outlet. His precision in dentistry has been transferred to porcelain works that refre reflect graceful forms and elegant glazes. And, and yes, up on the this, table joining this us one this right here, mm -hmm. that, that is uh, the piece that he'll have in the, yeah. in the uh, art drawing right. here. Okay, well, let's talk about how the art drawing works, people who are okay. referring to that. So as right. they visit, right. uh, there'll be a chance to win prizes? There will you? be a chance to win prizes. Mm -hmm. They I have right here the art drawings. Um, every artist has donated one of their creations valued at at least $25. And you will have your chance to win one of 26 pieces. So your odds, there's 26 right. pieces. pieces of representing At any of the participating studios on the tour, you can purchase a signature card for $10. Mm -hmm. You can purchase multiples if you like, too. The money does go to support JRAC and future studio tours and exhibits. You'll take the card with you on the studio tour and get at least 10 artists' signatures. Mm, okay. Like I said, we've got two if places. Four there's all there's together. four <laughs> right there. You know, so so you, in two stops, you can get eight. Mm -hmm. But if you get 10 signatures, you're entered one time for the, for the uh, drawings. Okay. If you get 20, you're entered twice. And if you get all 26 artists to sign your signature card, you will be entered three times. And so, you know, you've got a pretty a good, good chance, chance there for a $10 right. investment to win some beautiful artwork. Right. Uh, we're going to have the drawing immediately following the studio tour at Martin Luther School. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Luther School is going to be kind of a home base oh, okay. uh, for the studio tour. We will have a couple of artists there and all the pieces that are available for the raffle kind of display for, the, for the drawing mm -hmm. will be there. So they can come in and see in person what they're going to get a chance to win. Right. And then we're going to have the drawing at 5 o'clock Saturday, the studio, huh, studio tour closes at 3 on Saturday okay. and we're going to get all the artists to bring in their tickets and everything and turn them in and we'll have the drawing right there at, at 5 o'clock. Now they're talking about November 1st and 2nd so you start First off on a second. Friday evening. We're going to do a Friday evening, evening mm -hmm. and it'll be kind of a, an opening reception kind of a thing. We're mm -hmm. going to have some light refreshments at each of the studios and it'll be an evening opportunity for you to get around to uh, the different locations right. and that will be from 5 to 8 on the Friday night and then we'll turn around again on Saturday morning and open at 10 o'clock and do 10 to 3 for you to get to the rest of the places and mm -hmm. finish up your tour and visit with everybody. So, so you can start Friday, finish Saturday if you wish. Start to Friday that. and finish Saturday, absolutely. Right. And I know you had mm -hmm. a map, but there's no particular order in which people have to go. No, just no, kind of, no you order. Part of, east part of town, visit that first, and then right. the west or whatever. Right. right. And on the map, you'll notice that we've starred uh, Martin Luther School. Mm -hmm. That's just because we're calling that home base. Right. And yeah. like I said, the, the the art for the drawings will be there at Martin, Martin Luther and uh, you, you can see that there. You can pick up your tickets there, mm -hmm. however you want to do it. Every studio will have the tickets and the maps So you don't have available. to go to Martin Luther first. You right. can go for other places. Right. You can mm -hmm. go wherever you want to start. There's there's no no order. <laughs> <laughs> so do you encourage people maybe with children as well to travel on this tour? To oh, absolutely. See what's being done mm -hmm. in the community? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we might find some future artists. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the target groups, you know, just families, uh, other artists, are you finding some other artists maybe aren't participating in the show? but they want to go see what the others are doing yes, as well? Yes, yes, yes. I think uh, several 
had other uh, obligations and maybe mm -hmm. couldn't participate this year, but I'm hoping they'll get to uh, get around to, to visit with some of us too yeah. and see what the studio tour is all about. And next year, maybe out of that 115, we'll have half of them. Get a bigger group to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so you're promoting this through programs like this, interviews right. and so forth. Mm -hmm. I know we have the things like the first Thursday Art Walk, different mm -hmm. events in town mm -hmm. that people can find out more information through this as well. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. We'll be doing that. And we will also have uh, cards. Mm -hmm. um, Information cards? Well, um, oh, signs. There oh, we go. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Sometimes oh, my so mind people goes drive up to someone. So if you see a sign that says J Rack on it, mm -hmm. it'll say Studio Tour, and you'll mm -hmm. know if you see J Rack and Studio Tour, you need to stop. You're in the right place together uh -huh. and <laughs> tying that together. So, mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like an exciting project, people working together to make it happen. What are you enjoying the most about putting this together? Oh, I like doing stuff like this. I I enjoy the um, the the organization and the and the creative outlet that mm -hmm. I get from doing this and working with the other artists and. We're just trying to get our names out there, and, and it's beneficial for all of us mm -hmm. to, to participate in things like this. So. so really, artists create, but they don't create solely for themselves. They want to share right. their work. We want to share. We want everybody to love our stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a chance to see it. This is a chance for the public to come see our stuff, mm -hmm. uh, see our studio, see where we work. Uh, some people, it will be in their homes. Right. So you'll visit the studio that they have in their homes, and some people like me, I have my uh, photography studio in a separate location, so mm -hmm. you'll be able to come see that. And, and yeah, some, some people may not realize that you know, it's just right down the street. I have an artist living there doing things. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they they may learn things. Mm -hmm. Yes, to learn more about your community mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, so if people need more information, you mentioned you have a website and a Facebook page. Yes, yes, and I'm hoping that they have that uh, uh, for you on there. Well, okay. we can put that there. We go. There. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Because I couldn't remember what the dot com was. <laughs> How do you, what is the exact address? Right? Exactly. Right. Yes. Check us out there mm -hmm. and and check us out on Facebook. And Great. if you know any of the artists, talk to them. Mm -hmm. uh, we can. We can. They want to be visited. It. They want you to visit. That's right. <laughs> right. That's right. Well, I know you had some other artists. We didn't get to see their works, mm -hmm. but maybe as we close, they can show those or something like people see. But absolutely. You know, like I say, there's a lot of different mediums, a lot of different things people can see in the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we've covered all the bases there. All right. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jane, for visiting with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And I'd like to thank you, the viewers, for joining us this week on Newsmakers. I'm Judy Stiles. Hope you can join me again next week at the same time on this station. We'll see you then.